Hey, welcome to Fix It For Josh's Sake. Today I'm working on a 1981 Yamaha XS650. I'm going to pull the carbs out of here because uh, they're not idling and it's not revving at all. And so I'm going to take you along as I fix it for Josh's sake. First thing you'll need to do is grab your key and undo this lock and that'll let the seat come up. Second thing you'll need to do is uh, get a 10 millimeter uh, wrench and take out that 10 millimeter bolt and then that tank is going to come up and off of there. The next thing you need to do is make sure that you have your fuel on off and then this little bung right there has that fuel line on it. You pull that off and then you can pull your tank up and off of there. Now we have a real good access uh, to these carbs here, but while I'm under here and the seat's pulled off and everything, I figured I'd hook up my charger and just make sure I get a good strong charge in this battery before we're going to be running it here in a little bit. Getting the throttle cable off isn't very difficult. Merely a pull up here, pull it out like that, and then we can pull it completely out of the, the slot that you see there. And so now we've got our cable free and clear. Next thing we're going to do is grab a Phillips screwdriver. We're going to go in here, we're going to loosen that Phillips screw, and we're going to come all the way around to the other side and loosen up that Phillips screw. Once you have these loose, they'll kind of just be dangling there like that, you're going to do a two-hand operation here, and you're going to grab this rack, this carburetor rack, and you're going to work it back and forth, uh, one hand on each side. So you got a hand on this side here, and a hand over here on this side, and when you work this up and down and pull back, this... Uh, rubber seal here will let loose on the carb bank and you'll be able to pull it back this way. Once you have them popped off like this, uh, the choke assembly is on the left side right here. You can see it right there. That makes it impossible to pull the carb out of this frame uh, to the right. So you have to come this way and it's a little bit of a tricky process of kind of dropping it down and around, but you do it just right you can find the little moment where it it kind of pops right out now it's real easy with two hands but there it is okay now we can work on this carburetor and get it cleaned up that's not the scope of my video the scope of my video is pulling out this rack and putting in a new rack that I just cleaned up now if you're doing like me and you got a rack that's all set up a carb bank that's ready to go just do a few checks you know make sure that the that needle is rising good and that's working. Uh, make sure your choke is coming in and out nice. Make sure that your throttle mechanism moves easily. Uh, I've already bench sunk these carbs to be sure that they're as close as possible before we're actually running the motor. Uh, everything else looks real nice on this. It's got a fresh rebuild on it. I did set my idle screws, which are right there and there. Uh, those are two turns out, so keep that in mind. That's my point of reference. All right, let's start putting this back in the machine. All right, here's the bank. We're back at the bike, just like at first, only in reverse. We're going to tip it down a little bit and kind of bring it up towards... We need to get around the frame pipe, okay? But then we also got to get around that bolt right there. So we're doing a tip and a lift. And so you can usually feel it from the other side, how to bring it in. All right. And then, it's fun doing this one-handed to show you guys, but then, there it is, it sits like this. Now all I have to do is wiggle and work it back into those rubber boots. There is no cheat code on getting these carbs into those rubber boots. It is a matter of working them up and down, working them up and down, and eventually, they pop into place. But it's not easy, and it takes a lot of brute force, just pushing, 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 right, right here into the, the cylinders. So, yeah, uh, be warned, roll up your sleeves, push hard. Uh, somebody could probably maybe put some, like, grease or something on there. I chose to leave my boots dry and clean so that I just didn't want to attract any extra dirt into that area. Next, I'm just going to be tightening this hex bolt. Uh, I'm sorry, that Phillips screw and that Phillips screw right there to make sure I have a good tight air seal on these carburetors. You know how they say an ounce of planning can create a, you know, a huge impact in prevention. Well, uh, this Phillips screw right there has to be at a 45 because you've got to get in above this choke bracket 
Now, had somebody uh, had the foresight to pull that hose clamp off and flip it around and put it underneath here so the Phillips stuck out right here, I would have actually been able to uh, loosen from right here, which also would have meant I would have done the same smooth, slick little operation, pull that off, flip it around, and put it right here. That would give me more access. Now, I'm just working on this bike quick here uh, to move it along, so I wasn't really worried about that. But if you're trying to get your bike to be sleek and smooth, I suggest you do that. Take these off, flip them around, have them under here. Last detail here, we're going to grab this uh, throttle cable. I just want to see it here as I wheel around. It goes in the slot like that, comes up like this, and you pull up on it, and it just sits right in there and allows your throttle up there on the handlebars, right up there, to, uh, to work this mechanism. Next, we're going to grab this tank. We're going to bring it over here, and we're going to make sure that the uh, rubber grommets in the tank sit right in here on each side and that the back of the tank sits right here so we can put that bolt back in. Lastly, make sure you got that hose line and clamp on there real good to make sure all the gas will flow right down here into these float bowls. Well, this makes a perfect teaching moment because I thought I could get away with this line right here. It's a little crusty, a little stiff, uh, but it wasn't terrible. I thought I could go ahead and get away with uh, using it again. Uh, but when I turned this gas on, it just leaked all over. You can see how it's wet. So I'm going to go ahead and run a new piece of fuel line from here down to this T right down in there so that we're not leaking any gas on this motor. All right, there's the fresh line. Got it, hose clamp there, wire clamp there. And since I had to take the carburetor off to do that, I went ahead and did exactly what I was telling you you should do. And uh, put my hose clamp uh, screws down here. So everything's back to really, really fresh and new. And we'll turn this on and get gas going back into these float bowls. All right, gas is on. I'm gonna pull the choke here and I'm gonna come up here and turn the key, make sure my engine's on. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and turn this over a few times, see if we can't get this carburetor to pump some fresh gas into this motor right here. Well, there you go, I got the car back in. Everything's buttoned up nice. Uh, thanks for watching along as I fix it for Josh's sake. If you like what you saw here, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Give me a subscribe and send this along to a friend. Thank you. Have a great day.